Okay, let's now look at EJB. Just before talking about EJBs, we'll talk about J2E in general. J2E is stands for Java to Enterprise Edition. Why was this introduced? Now initially we had only the JDK kit that is Java to SDK. Later on J2E was introduced because once they started the J2, J2 SDK consisted of only core contents like for core Java packages and for RMI and Java Beans. And once they started introducing, introducing the advanced topics like servlets, JSP, etc. Now if we had to support for a right code for each one of these and the servers had to support them in return. So each one would end up supporting to different versions of each of these softwares or each of these topics. Now what they did was they collectively put all the advanced contents together into a single package called J2E. So now the servers specify that they support to J2E version so and so. Instead of saying servlet version this or JSP so and so version and let's say uh, JDBC so and so version, right? So it's collectively known as J2E version so and so is what the server supports. So that's how J2E came about. Apart from J2 SDK and J2E, we also have a J2 ME package. So there are three kits now by Sun. J2 ME is a micro edition, Java 2 micro edition, which has set of packages used to develop code called midlets for your mobile PDAs. J2E consists of the following components like Java Beans, JNDI, EJB, Servlets, JDBC, JSP, RMI, RMI IIOP, JTS, JTA, and the list goes on like this. So these are just few of the components available in J2E. The JNDI stands for Java Naming and Directory Interface, JTS Java Transaction Service, JTA Java Transaction API. <coughs> so the architecture of J2E and the specification of J2E goes like this. The J2E specification says nothing about how to implement the specification or how to implement the environment. So all the, the J2E uh, specification says is when the components are written, how they should be written such that the container can handle the components. So the architecture of J2E basically consists of three contents. That is, you have the components, the services, and the communication. Of course, your components are nothing but your web components and enterprise components, which is servlets, JSP and EJB. Your services are the various services provided for your components like the database service, the messaging service, the security service, transaction service, etc. When we talk about communication, how do I communicate between components? 
and between services. So, it is using RMI, IIOP, etc. The container architecture for J2E is the component contract declarative services. The container architecture consists of component contract, declarative services, container services and other services. Now what do I mean by component contract? It means to say that when I write a component, the component should adhere to certain rules like such that the component can be handled by the container. Like for example, you are writing a servlet, a servlet should be derived from HTTP servlet or generic servlet. You are writing an EJB, it has to be derived from a particular set of interfaces. If you are writing an applet for example, an applet should be derived from an applet class. This is the component con container contract, so that the container can handle certain services for a component. The container services that are provided for a component are various services like the database service, the messaging service, security service, transaction service, etc. Now, although these services are provided by the container or is made available by the container for the component, the component needs to tell the container which of these services it requires and that is done through what is known as a deployment descriptor. So, that is where the declarative services comes into picture. So, declarative services is nothing but when you declare in your deployment descriptor what services that you want for your component and only such services will be provided for that particular component. Then we have other services, other services is like for your component instance pooling is done by the container. A number of instances for your component is created and when each user comes in with a request for each client, one instance is allocated. So, instance pooling is done by your container. Instance swapping is done. That is taking an instance allocated from one client and allocating to another client. So, one other component of J2E which we have to talk about is the JNDI, Java Naming and Directory Interface, which we also referred in JMS. Java Naming Directory Interface is a namespace or a naming directory like your RMI registry where you place remote objects. RMI registry acted like a just a naming service whereas JNDI is a naming and directory service. So, therefore, in RMI registry when you placed objects you just specified a simple name. There was no uh, you know hierarchy specified as such. Objects are placed on the root context of the registry. Whereas, in JNDI you can place objects at the root of the JNDI context or you can give a directory structure under which you want to place the objects. By having to place under a directory structure, you can group together objects of similar type. That is the advantage with by providing a directory structure. 